Down the field. Hollywood. Let me think about that one. 77 yards. Whoa. Who is this kid? Let's do it. Welcome back to the Steve Weatherford Show, and I just want to re-remind you guys why you're here. Um, I'm going to share with you our core values. I'm going to share with you our mission statement, and today is actually a, a new episode for us. I'm going to pray real quick, and then we're going to get into this. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this micro content that we're going to produce today, and we know that we don't need a ton of time. We just need your voice to be heard, so we just ask that you decrease me as the speaker in this moment. You just increase your voice and allow that to be heard. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So I recently had a flight um, back to Chicago. My best friend from college, his uh, his mother died suddenly. And uh, so I did a lot of flying last week and had some emotional times with people that I love very much. And it really kind of caused me to look at life and how much time that I have left. And one thing that this podcast is about, and I'm going to read the mission statement for you, our core values, our freedom. These are the things that we care about. So if you're listening to this podcast and you don't value these things, I'm not going to be offended. Just go to the next show. But if you value freedom, discipline, discipline, growth, faith, and family, then this is the place for you. Our mission statement is this is not a podcast. It's a movement transforming each listener into an agent of change. Each episode will civilize your mind, make savage your body, and awaken your spirit, giving you permission and the tools to operate in a radical boldness to unlock what's possible in your faith, your family, your fitness, and your finances. Because I don't want this to be a podcast where people come here and just get one nugget for one area of your life. I believe what you get inside of this podcast is going to be able to transform not just one area, but every single area of your life. So what I want to get into today is time mastery. Cause I said earlier, you know, self mastery is something that I'm constantly focused on because I've got a wife, I've got six kids, I've got businesses, I've got friends, I've got men that I lead one-on-one -on -one, CEOs and entrepreneurs from all over the world. And and in order for me to lead them well, I have to lead myself well, but in order for me to lead myself well, and as you listen to this now, I want you to lead yourself well too. You have to be great at time management, but better than time management, it's gotta be time mastery. And so one thing I wrote down on my iPad, and I'm gonna read it to you, and some of my numbers could be a little bit off, but when I was in the NFL, we did life seven days at a time. So we might play the Pittsburgh Steelers on a Sunday, and then we would come in on Monday, and we would watch the game film from the previous week. And we would look to see where we can make adjustments to get better as overall for a team. But then we would also scout the next team that we're going to play next week. So if we're playing the Arizona Cardinals, we're going to want to make adjustments of things that we didn't do well against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But scouting and preparing for the Arizona Cardinals, we have to cast a vision of what we believe is possible when we play against that opponent. And that's what I call the general's tent. And so this is something that I believe that you can work on every single Sunday and it will optimize. And really from week to week, you're just going to get better and better and better. And that's what life is all about. That's how you win championships. When I was a New York giant, that's how we were able to win a Super Bowl is because we got better and better and better. We got into the, we got into the off season with a nine and seven record. So I'm going to quickly go through this because this is five minute fire and it's a new exercise for me. So I apologize if I'm speaking fast, you got 168 hours in every single week. And what I'm gonna to begin to do for you right now is that's what we have to work with, seven days at a time. So we have 168 hours. You and I, we're gonna sleep about seven hours per night. So right off the bat, you're whacking off 49 hours off of what's capable and what you have to use um, for that week. That's 119 hours. So the next question I, I ask you is, what's important to you? Like, what's the order of importance that deserves this time? Because ultimately, if you want to live your best life, it's going to be a culmination of you deciding to make investments in the things that matter most to you and in your ability to eliminate distractions and keep the main thing, the main thing. But I ask you, what's the main thing to you? And if you don't know that concisely, I'm going to share with you what's important to me. And then you can vary off of this if you choose to. But for me, there's five things that are really, really important to me. And this is the order of how they're important. God, self, my marriage, my family, and my career. And I'll kind of go through those really quickly. God, because I believe he is number one in my life. And the reason I put myself second is I believe when I get everything that I need, meaning food and sleep and exercise and my self-care, I believe I'm going to be able to lead and love my marriage 
to my highest ability. I also believe I'm going to be able to lead and love my family, my family of choice and my children. I mean, when I say family of choice is the, the friends that don't have my last name, or my DNA that I choose to do life with. I don't treat them like friends. I, feed, I treat them like family of choice because it's a choice for me to do life with them. And then lastly, my career. So how am I going to make money to pay for all the stuff that I want to do in my life? So we're going to quickly go through this. Remember, we're at 119 hours. Since God is number one to me, the first thing I do every single day is 30 minutes with God. And I call that my first fruit. So seven days times 30 minutes, that's three and a half hours. And we're going to begin to subtract this from 119. You're, you're taking off three and a half hours every Sunday and every Saturday. I spend two hours at church on Saturday. It's for um, men's leadership and two hours on Sunday, because that's when I go to church with my family. So there's another four hours. And remember, I'm going in order of importance. And so this is the time that I'm investing into my relationship with God. Well, I've got to eat. So I spend one hour every single day eating food, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and another hour preparing the food, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Just so you guys know, we're at 96 hours right now. And the whole reason I'm sharing what I'm doing in my life is because I want to use this. I want you to use this as an example. And I want you to go through this exercise when this podcast is over. Another, another time suck. I spend about two hours in the car every single day, taking my kids to and from school or traveling to and from the gym or appointments. That's 14 hours. Now we're down to 82 hours. My self-care routine in the morning and at night. So I spend about 20 minutes in the morning getting ready, 20 minutes at night, preparing myself for sleep. Then I also spend about another 20 minutes on the toilet. That's about one hour per day. So that's seven hours per week. Now we're down to 75 hours. Now remember, these are just like the basics of where my time has to go in order for me to live. All right, guys, I want to take a brief break from the show, and we're going to get back to our episode in just one minute, but I wanted to thank our sponsor, and I also wanted to tell you a little bit about them. About eight years ago, I really got into biohacking. I really got into um, brain optimization, and if you didn't know, I'll tell you right now, I've got extreme ADHD. My son's got ADD, and he's got dyslexia, and so we actually went out to Costa Mesa, California to work uh, with the CEO of this company. His name is Dr. Amen. He's the number one brain specialist in the world, and after doing some brain mapping with him and her, and learning a whole lot more about the world of biohacking through um, neurovitamins like this. And I learned so much and I've actually had my family on a regiment of, of brain health supplements. And I want you to go over and check out brainmd.com and you can save 15% at checkout using the word Weatherford 15. And you can get onto some supplements like tyrosine, like GABA. Um, and they've also got some emotional support for, for anxiety anxiousness and things like that. So I really believe in this company. I really believe in Dr. Amen. He's been on this show and you guys are going to love the supplements that he's created. So my health and wellness routine is two hours per day, seven days per week. So that's 14 more hours. So we go from 75 to 61. Now I'm at 61 hours and I've got a non-negotiable for me. Now, if I said my self-care, eating, sleeping, time with God. And now I've moved into the second phase of that. And that's my relationship with my, with my wife, my marriage. Every seven days, I have a four hour date with my wife on a Friday. And if I'm out of town on a Friday, then we move that to a different day. It is non-negotiable. It happens every single week. And that's four hours. I also have a non-negotiable. I have four daughters and I date each of those daughters one time per month. So Tuesday is my daddy daughter date night. And those are three hours. So that's another seven hours from my week. And now I'm down to about 47 hours. I have a 30 minute meeting with my wife every single day, seven days per week. And what we do is we kind of catch up on, hey, how was your day? And what does tomorrow look like? And how can I support you? And vice versa. Um, my wife and I, we've been married for 15 years. We have six kids. And yes, you guessed it. We do have intimate time. Um, I usually give my wife a massage for about 20 minutes, three times per week. And then we have some extracurricular activities after that. So I would say in summation, we're probably looking at about 90 minutes and I'm probably over exaggerating because I usually only need a few minutes to take my clothes off. But the point is now I'm down to 42 hours. Part of my wind down at night is I like to watch Netflix. I like to watch documentaries and things like that. So that's one hour per night. That's another seven hours. So now I'm down to 35 hours. And if you have noticed, I haven't worked one hour yet. And I only have 35 hours left in my week. And so what you and I need to do if we're thinking to ourselves, man, I don't have enough time. Well, you need to look at your remaining hours that you have in the week. And I have 35 of them. I need to make sure that the, that the career that I choose, the job that I do, or where I invest my time 
has an accurate return on that investment. I need these 35 hours to be able to pay for the life that I want to live. And a lot of people do it backwards is they stack all of their business stuff, all of their meetings, all of the things that create money for them. And at the end of the week or the end of the month, they're realizing I haven't been on a date in a month or a year. I don't date my daughters at all. I never work out and I don't have time to eat healthy. Well, that's because you put those things as a lower priority on your life. So not only am I teaching you guys right now, real time, how to master your time, but also how to prioritize your time so you can keep the main thing, the main thing. If it's the main thing, it should go on the calendar first. So now we're down to 35 hours. And now this is actually when I start to create income for my family. I have about 10 men that I work with one-on-one -on -one at a capacity of I FaceTime with them or Zoom with them one time every single week. And that's my highest and my best use. It's the thing that I love to do the most because I build relationship with a man that I really love and a man that I see myself doing life with and doing family with 10 years from now. And they also compensate me and pay me well for my time. And so I'm able to take 35 hours every single week and dedicate 10 hours for that. For that. Now I'm down to 25 hours, but that 10 hours brings, brings in a great deal of income for my family um, week over week. So now at 25 hours, I put about two hours into social media, six days a week. I take one day to as a Sabbath and um, that's 12 hours right there. So I went from 25, take off another 12. Now you're down to about 13 hours. I have about 13 hours and the last thing I'll do is my podcast. So now I'm down to about nine hours for the week that I can use to go on dinners that I didn't plan basketball games that weren't on the schedule or dance classes that my daughters would love to have me at. And so my point is, is I want you to understand where you're at and where your time is going, because once you can master planning your day, the next thing is to master being disciplined to that plan. And if you do that long enough, six months, a year, two years, five years, that's why I believe I'm in the season that I'm in from a physicality and a ment mentality standpoint is I focus so much on developing my mental and my physical. Now that I've had this spiritual revelation, I'm being able to take these incredible disciplines and put them on purpose for something. And that's why I believe everything that I touch moving forward because of why I'm touching it, because it's not for me, it's Matthew 6, I'm seeking first the kingdom. And I believe that all these things will be added unto me, but it starts with me stewarding what I can steward, controlling what I can control. And I can absolutely control what I put my yes on. So when you guys are creating your schedule, make sure that you're keeping the main thing, the main thing. So I appreciate you guys being with me. And I love doing YouTube now. I've only done a couple episodes, but if you guys want to hear more about what we're talking about, you want me to dive deeper on different topics, man, just let me know, comment in the comment section. I guess I'm supposed to say subscribe to this channel and share it with somebody that it may impact. And the last thing I want to give you guys an opportunity to do is there's going to be a link I'm assuming below this video. I got a bunch of these t-shirts made. Jesus is King t-shirts and they're real stretchy and they fit tight on your arms because that's important to me. And we got American flag on the back. So if you want to get laced in grace and you want to walk into the room and people already know what you're about, I wear one of these shirts just about every single day because it's really cool to bring, to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ without even opening your mouth. So um, we already sold out of these, but I'm going to make sure that by the time we release this episode that they're back in stock. So click that link, support the show. I love you guys. God bless. And we'll see you on the next episode.